came into Atlantic City Schools at a time when it was on the verge of a state takeover. It had a state monitor. Why did Why did you want the job? Well, I actually I left Egg Harbor Township, um, and and there were issues there, and we had a settlement. I had tenure. We left, and actually um, uh, Jim Whalen came to me because I uh, was appointed by Governor Whitman uh, as chairman of the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority and he said look Fred there's been seven superintendents in Atlantic City in five years uh, and um, we need somebody you know to take over the reins and would you be interested so I told him I would and he said um, I'll talk to the board members and uh, you know that was pretty much what led up to me coming in. So why did you want to do it? What did you think you could do? Well, <clears throat> it was time for me to leave Egg Harbor Township. Mm -hmm. um, I spent 20 years, 28 years in Egg Harbor Township, everywhere from a teacher, vice principal, principal of the middle school, principal of the high school, superintendent, I think, for maybe 18 years. Mm -hmm. And um, there's an old adage, friends come and go, but en enemies accumulate. <laughs> and it was time for me to leave. Mm -hmm. So I was about 48 years of age. I wasn't prepared to totally retire, mm -hmm. but I was ready to leave Egg Harbor Township for the goodness of the district, for the, uh, what needed to be done in the future, rather than me staying in the way because of political issues. I just thought it was time for me to walk away. I was prepared to go with uh, an architectural firm called EI Group. And they built two schools in Egg Harbor Township. They built a school, a couple schools in Pleasantville, and they built a school in Brigantine. And they wanted me to come on because at the time I had been an assemblyman, and I probably had more contacts uh, through sitting on the education committee and the state assembly of New Jersey, and they thought I would be beneficial to their company. So I wasn't really prepared to come back to. At, you know, to do superintendency, but Jim Whalen asked me, said there was a need, and I did. So I never did work for EI Group. I uh, came into Atlantic City, and uh, I was supposed to be, at that time, you could only be interim for six months. I served my six-month uh, interim period, and um, I've been here ever since for 12 years. What was your strategy trying to turn the district around? What were your goals? Well, what was interesting, Diane, was the very first day... I was sitting in uh, what was Jack Eisenstein's chair, and he's someone we all respected a great deal for being a superintendent for many years in Atlantic County and Atlantic City. Uh, unto my knowledge, who shows up but the Deputy Commissioner of Education, John Sherry, mm -hmm. and the County Superintendent, Dr. and he's Dr. John Sherry, and Dr. Ney, Marty Ney, came to my office. And they said the last thing that the governor wants to do is take over Atlantic City. It's the casino capital. Uh, we don't want to, you know, this bad be taken over, you know, uh, Newark and uh, perhaps Orange. And I actually sat on, on the committee when they did that in the state assembly. And um, we need to do a couple of things. One, we need to build new schools mm -hmm. and we need to get test scores up. So they more or less gave me my orders of what had to be done. So uh, that was in October. I think by that spring, we had approved two bond referendums to build the Sovereign Avenue School as well as the New York Avenue School. We had our budget passed, and we started working on trying to increase test scores. Mm -hmm. so you make it sound so simple, but obviously it's not. It well, take to do that? yeah, it, it's not simple. The first thing you have to do is do an assessment of the school district. And I was amazed to find out that every school wasn't doing the same thing in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have the same textbooks. They didn't have the same curriculum. And then when you do a research analysis and find out that students, about 25% of our students transferred inside the district to different schools, these students weren't receiving the same curriculum at the different schools. 
So the first thing we had to do was, you know, devise a curriculum that every elementary school was exactly the same. And, of course, that doesn't happen overnight. I've been here 12 years. It's taken us 12 years to get to this point. And uh, everyone knows that if you want to make change, principles are the most important thing to, to making change in a school. And I was fortunate enough, after about a year and a half, to bring Donna Hay in. I worked with Donna Hay in Acover Town. She was a teacher. She was a kindergarten teacher, I believe. Uh, she was a guidance counselor. She was an uh, administrative uh, principal at a, a district fair someplace up in Cumberland County. I don't know where. And um, I was able to bring her in. And one of the things I asked her when I interviewed her was for the Martin Luther King School. I said, Donna, how do I sell a blonde Caucasian to a school that is basically over 90% minority? And she said, Fred, when you put your arms around a child, and they know that you love them and you care about them. They don't care what color you are. And that's exactly how Donna Hay got into the Atlantic City School District. And from that, Marty, how you doing? And from that, uh, she was very successful. She raised test scores at the Martin Luther King School. And then she became assistant superintendent. And she was basically the architect of our academic change uh, for the school district that has now given us a three-year certification as being a highly performing school district. I'll get away from Atlantic City a little bit. You have done a lot of other things in your career. You were mayor of which, some of which I didn't even know of. <laughs> you know you were mayor I, um, of the township, uh, committee men, freeholders. Mm -hmm. One of the first bills I sponsored when I was in the assembly and I, I probably shouldn't take credit for this, was the $2 parking fee uh, that created the funds to eliminate the old bus station and to do the renovations into Atlantic City off the expressway. Now, a lot of times you're criticized for that, but I think that was a positive, mm -hmm. a positive, uh, a positive bill. Um, I was the individual, Fred Sherney before me, had a bill that permitted gambling for a period of time, for maybe 24 hours during a select period of time. But John Gaffney and I, uh, sponsored the bill that was approved that actually permitted 24-hour gaming in Atlantic City. Before that, it was restricted to a certain point of time. Um, as, a, as the um, chairman of the board for the Casino Executive, uh, I'm sorry, Casino uh, Reinvestment Development Authority, I was uh, proud of the number of housing units that we've been able to build in Lang City. Uh, we have certainly changed the look of the inlet to what it was 20 years ago to what it is today. Work still needs to be done. Um, the city is continuing to, to prosper because of the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority. And um, not everything you do always works out. But when you look at the baseball stadium, you look at the skate zone, you look at the renovation of Boardwalk Hall, which we'll have our graduation on Wednesday, the renovations that the CRDA put into that. When you look at to the um, different entryways into Atlantic City, uh, and when you look at to, um, I, I can remember certain radio hosts criticizing us for talking about 
doing, you know, number one, where we built the new convention hall, where the Sheridan was built, and then building the um, retail stores and between that and the boardwalk. That was a big criticism, but it's turned out to be rather successful. So when you look at the different things that you were part of, and even though you took criticism, it's good to, uh, to see them flourishing today and doing well. That, that, well, my management style is this. I've always been a team oriented, mm -hmm. and the one thing I learned from Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. I may not be the smartest guy in the room, but I'm smart enough to get smart people around me. Mm -hmm. And that's always been my goal. Now, where the three B's came from, be brief, be brilliant, be gone, that came from Arthur Goldberg, mm -hmm. who owned Bally's, and he sat on the CRDA. And he's the one that shared that with me. And I asked him if I could use that. And he said, yes. Because there's nothing I resent more than people that will come in for a meeting and will tell you the same thing three times. I understood the first time. I can, you know, I can understand the first time. I got it. But he was the one that taught me the three B's. Be brief, be brilliant, be gone. And that is probably the one thing that uh, I, I uh, probably tell people, and sometime, not to offend people, but just to get through what we're at board meetings, you know, salesmen that want to come in, you know, come on, you know, tell me what you got to say, and you know, be brief, be brilliant, be gone. I love that. I love that phrase. And on that note, we will be brief, be brilliant, and, and be gone. <laughs> All right.